So how do you start narrowing down what your Genius Hour project will be? You have to ask yourself, looking at your idea board, which idea most excites you? What do you need to move forward with one of those ideas? What could you make, create, or design with what you discover? In thinking about the four pathways to genius, remember there's the inquiry path, the expert path, the create path, and the change path. Your genius hour topics will probably fall into one of these four pathways or maybe a combination. So when you're thinking about the big picture of your genius hour project, are you thinking more of a learning based genius hour topic, more of a design based or more of a service based? I'm going to use two examples from my idea board to show you how you can narrow down your ideas. One of my examples is about water, the potential water crisis that we may face. And the second is New Zealand, my curiosity and interest in traveling to New Zealand. Before I look at either one, I've got to think about what would be the perfect source for a Genius Hour topic about New Zealand or a Genius Hour topic about potential water crisis. So then you have to ask, what's an actual source? Thinking about sources, you want to go beyond just the basics of what you might find on a basic web search. So what about people, particular organizations, places, specific locations, even your own observations. Are those considered sources? The answer is yes. Remember, a source can be anything that provides you information about your Genius Hour idea. It could be a book, an article, whether in print or online, obviously web resources, even blog posts, any kind of media, organizations, experts, and others. What about this? Is Google a source? Think about that for a moment. Well, one way to think about Google is to imagine a highway, the information highway. Google is like your personal assistant or your GPS for that. It helps you find particular sources along the information highway. As you drive along, you could come across a source that would be helpful, come across a source that's interesting but not useful, and so on. So Google is not an actual source. It helps you get to the potential sources you could use for your project. What about Wikipedia? Take a moment to think about that. What is Wikipedia? Well, it's an online encyclopedia, isn't it? Is an encyclopedia a source? Yes, Wikipedia is a source, but it's considered a tertiary source. This is a source that you should only use for building background and finding other primary and secondary sources. This is a list of types of sources from EasyBib. Noodle Tools Express also gives lots of examples of different types of sources. You can see here, there's more than just your basic book or website. This video about primary and secondary sources, I highly recommend you to watch, and there will be a link to this on the Genius Hour guide. You should watch this so that you understand the difference specifically between primary and secondary sources because it can help you find some really great ones for your Genius Hour project once you decide what to do. Tertiary sources, as I mentioned in reference to Wikipedia, are used for reference, so those are a great starting point. Here are some examples. Britannica, which is one of our search apps. Many of you know Wikipedia and other things like almanacs and dictionaries. Even your textbook could be considered a tertiary source to just to get you started. When you're looking at all the different types of sources that you could use for your project, you want to have a balance, but mostly they should come from primary or secondary sources. Tertiary should just start you off. So how do you go about looking for the perfect source for your Genius Hour project? Don't forget about the online catalog. There's a link to it on the LC's homepage. You never know what kind of books or other resources you might find. In the LC search apps inside Launchpad, there are thousands upon thousands of potential sources. So don't just jump to Google and try to find everything you need because you can't. You need to look at the catalog and the search apps inside Launchpad. On the upcoming mini search document you'll be using for Genius Hour, you're going to have to show the types of search queries you use for potential topics. Whenever you're doing a search query in writing, you want to use brackets to indicate what you type into a search box. If I were to do a search on dogs and rescue, it shows you what it would look like in the search box, 
but on my paper, I would use brackets to indicate the beginning and the end of that search. When you're doing a search query, remember, certain things do matter. Every word you type in matters. The order that you type in the words also matter. Capitalization does not matter, neither does punctuation, but there are some exceptions. So looking at my New Zealand fascination, what would be the perfect source if I were to do a learning, design, or service-based Genius Hour project? The first thing is to think about what would I type in my search box. The most obvious would be New Zealand. Then I have two other examples there listed in brackets underneath the picture. The first place I'm going to start is with the LC's online catalog. So all I need to do is go to the LC homepage and click on the catalog button. When I do a search for New Zealand, my results will first come up with the books listed. Then if you scroll across the top toolbar, you'll also notice Open Educational Resources. So let's go ahead and look inside the catalog. Here's my search results for the terms New Zealand. It will list the books first, and they include any books that have those keywords in them. So I have to be selective in which books I'm actually going to look and find on the shelves if they're relevant to my project. But I also see this Open Educational Resources. This is a cool feature within our catalog that links to websites and web pages with relevant information. So here, just within the catalog, I could find potential web sources to help me with my Genius Hour topic. My second example is about the potential water crisis we face. What would be the perfect source if I were to do a learning, design, or service-based type of project about this topic. For this, I can also look in the catalog and I could also check the different search apps we have inside Launchpad. Some potential searches I could do, starting with water, then maybe water issues or water crisis. So let's go look in the catalog to see what I find. My search results for the terms water crisis did bring back at least four books. I could also look at the open educational resources and see what web links it recommends. But I also want to make sure that I check out the search apps. Remember, the search apps live in Launchpad under the Library Resources cluster. When I open them, I'll have a lot of options to choose from. But I think I'm going to start with Gale Resource Science and Context. Here are my search results for water crisis. I notice it breaks down all the different types of sources. But I also have this option called Topic Finder. If you use particular Gale search apps, you could use the Topic Finder. Topic Finder is a cool feature in many of the Gale search apps. What Topic Finder does is visually represent your resources or sources based on the words that you type in. So these are my search results in tile form for water crisis. As I scroll through, I can zoom in on different sources and then choose particular ones. I can also search by wheel. This will give me other ideas for other search terms I can use related to my Genius Hour topic. So now what you're going to do is look at your idea board, choose three ideas, and try mini searching to find potential sources based on those idea topics. Then you'll use those three mini search results to help you narrow it down to one Genius Hour topic to focus on. Inside Google Classroom, your reading teacher will have put a link to this mini search topic activity sheet that you will use as your guide through that process.